Hi everyone. I'm Dr. Smith, and I am uh, your instructor for this online asynchronous course on ethics in the professional context of teaching. I'm really excited to have you here and in to engage with the material. I wanted to just give you a few pointers about the Carmen site and about the course in general. So first, the syllabus is already set up, so you can go check that out under the syllabus link uh, on the navigation panel. And that will give you some more information about the course. But I wanted to definitely tell you about the required text. So um, these you need to get like immediately because the first assignment is due Friday. Uh, I'm going to try to upload the reading that you'll need um, for Friday. I'm going to go scan at the library, but I want I encourage you to get your own books ready. These are both available on Kindle, uh, but this is um, Dilemmas uh, of Educational Ethics is one book that you'll need. And then by the same people, you'll need uh, Democratic Discord in Schools. So this is what the books look like, and I encourage you to get those quickly. And then I wanted uh, to tell you about like the main kind of assignment that you have for this course. So each week there's going to be discussion posts that I'm going to have you engage in. And those, I require all students to do 250 words uh, per post for their original post. And then in 150 words, respond to a peer. Um, so you're going to look at your peers, your, your fellow classmates, original posts, and then you yourself are going to, to share your thoughts about what they said. Um, and I, I have some, some questions I want you to answer in the discussion post. And I want you to answer every single question. And, uh, so make sure you do that as you're, as you're going. And so for most weeks, so for this week, there's one discussion post and then for weeks two and three, there are two discussion posts. And then for week four, there's one discussion post again. Uh, so that I wanted to make sure that you knew those assignments. And if you have any questions about them, be sure to reach out to me. You can email me. And then I wanted to give you some grounding for the first week's readings. So I'm going to have you read uh, Brighouse uh, et al. And they talk about kind of the things they kind of give a framework for thinking about educational ethics uh, and, and how we ought to be moving through thinking about some of these problems in education. So I thought that was a useful uh, kind of first reading to do. And then I also gave you Jenks um, about what it means to be uh, fair and like and, uh, and parceling time as a teacher. And so I think that this is a good reading because it it kind of on a small scale kind of shows you the impact of, of ethical decisions in the classroom. And so if, especially if you're, you're thinking about being a classroom teacher, these are, are like constant mini ethical problems you, you're going to engage with every day. Um, and so I, I thought that that would be a good thing to do, to think through. And um, another thing, that, a reason I like that, that reading is because it, it, does a good job of like showing you that when we have ethical problems, there are always values at stake. Uh, and so we think about the, the problems that a teacher faces are always a conflict between competing values, right? Because it's not just one value, like not just um, educational achievement that we want for all students. We also have, have values of like safety, of inclusiveness, of, of making sure that uh, all of our students needs are met and so those values can be at odds with each other so maybe you know the inclusive value is at odds with uh, the educational achievement value that maybe it is educationally better to separate students based on achievement um, but maybe that has implications for inclusiveness and so I think uh, those competing values sometimes are are barriers for teachers to think through. And uh, so this kind of gets to, to something that I wanted to talk about with you uh, in this first video is, is thinking about what a dilemma is. So uh, the course that I have designed for you uh, is gonna deal mostly in case studies. So we're gonna be, be thinking about 
cases that philosophers have written in books like this uh, to think through some ethical principles in education. And these case studies are, are supposed to be like reality based, so they're real world based uh, with uh, research. And uh, the reason that they're called dilemmas or um, the reason the cases are important is because they're all around dilemmas. And so a dilemma happens when you have these two competing values uh, coming to battle with each other. Um, and so a dilemma might be a teacher is trying to decide how to spend their time. And they have an advanced student who they know if they gave more attention to the advanced student that their breakthrough could help the entire class. Uh, on the other hand, there might be a, a student who's behind in the, the content and the teacher knows that if they could just devote a little bit extra time to them, that that student could grow and get to the place where they need to be. And so the, the teacher needs to decide how best to bad budget their time. And so that's a dilemma. Uh, there's two equal, almost equally good choices and they kind of deal differently with philosophy, but like the kind of philosophy the teacher has de depends, or, or it, um, the kind of philosophy the teacher has determines what option they pick. Um, so I want, to be, I want you to be thinking about like the values that are important to you. So for me, uh, safety and inclusivity are very important. I think that it's important that students feel safe uh, in the classroom and I feel it's important that the classroom is created to to welcome everyone and so when I look at cases I think about those two values and how those two values are operating in the case uh, and so this first case that I'm having you think about the um, retention or promotion promotion or retention uh, is is thinking about some some values that we have for, for our students. So um, is it enough to think about educational achievement or is it, or do we also have to think about like uh, social values or, or what are our values to not just the student, but to the, the district, the district's rules, uh, the school's rules. And so there are lots of competing things happening in this, this case. And so I think it's a good one to begin with. And so I look forward to seeing your, your commentary on it. Um, and I want you to note, like I just said, the commentary. Um, so we're going to be thinking through the problem related to the, the, the case sketch that they give in each of the readings. But I also want you to engage with the commentary. So I want you to be reading the commentaries that follow each case. And that is for you, uh, for your development as much as it is. Uh, for desires I have for you. So uh, I think that the commentaries are going to give you a good idea about how to engage with the material. So how to talk about the case. You can read philosophers who also do that work. Uh, and so I want you, I think that the commentaries are going to give you a lot of good examples for the kind of work that I want you to be doing in your own discussion posts. Um, and so uh, briefly, I think that a good uh, discussion post answers all the questions that I have set forth in the discussion boards, uh, but also it might bring in outside material that you know about that you think relate to the case. It might also just really deal intensely with the text of the case. So you might think about uh, character motivations. You might think about uh, the values that characters have. You might think about different constraints that are happening in the case in the text of the case. Uh, and so I think that all of these are good ways to, to manage through thinking through the case. And I think uh, that's everything that I wanted uh, to talk to you about today. So I think that I tried to make it very simple, the Carmen site. So all of the, the assignments and readings should be in the modules and that they're they're delineated by the week, and then the week has the theme for each week. Uh, so 
this week is is thinking ethically. Um, and so I want you to be thinking about these things. Uh, but also due dates. So uh, the Friday of each week, your discussion post for that week is due. And then by Sunday of that week, you should have responded to one of your classmates. So those are the big um, due dates that are going to be happening throughout the summer, throughout this month. And uh, then as we get closer to the end, I'll talk more about the ethical teacher um, assignment. But this is an asynchronous course. You can engage with the material however you want to engage with it. But just make sure that you have your your discussion post for each week done by the time that's supposed to be done. And then you'll get all your, your points, you know, for that. Um, if you have any questions, email me. And I look forward to hearing from you. Um, I'm, I want to clarify what I said about the asynchronous course. So uh, if you want to work ahead and get all of it done, that's fine. I That's totally cool. Uh, but don't fall behind. Uh, if you fall behind, I'm going to flag you and, and, and kind of email you and, and stay on your case. Uh, so I look forward to engaging with you. And I'm going to try to engage in the discussion post myself. Um, so I think that what I'm going to do probably is let you all um, talk through things. And then at the end of the week, I will. So on, on Monday, uh, the following week, I will uh, kind of post a summary of everything that that was talked about in the discussion and uh, kind of point out good things that happened and uh, point, points for further development. And uh, so I think that's the tactic I'm going to take. Uh, if you have any questions, email me. My email is smith.7000 at buckeyemail.com or buckeyemail.edu. All right. So I look forward to hearing from you and I hope you have a great May and I look forward to engaging with your thoughts. Thanks so much.